A couple of videos ago, I shot and shared this image. The objective was to recreate the scene that my eyes could see. And that was lots of detail in the monument and in the sea, but also a really nice crescent moon that also had detail in it. In this video, I wanted to show you exactly how I edited the images to create this final piece. I hope you'll enjoy it. If you do, and you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe before you go. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. This was the image, and it was one of those opportunistic shots. I was walking to a different location for an early morning shoot and I spotted this scene and I just had to shoot it. Now I must admit when I put the video out I did make a little bit of a mistake. Um, in that I put up my normal sort of camera lens exposure settings information and I said it was a merge of three exposures, 30 seconds, two and a half seconds, and one eighth of a second. Um, but between doing the actual image edit and putting the video together, I forgot that in the end I dropped the middle exposure. So it's actually only a 30 second exposure and a one eighth of a second exposure. And in this video, what we're gonna do is have a look at the processing that was done first in Lightroom and then in Photoshop to get the result that you've seen here. Okay, so here's the first image in Lightroom. This was the 30 second exposure, and it's not had an awful lot done to it. You can see over on the, the basics panel here, I've lifted the exposure just a fraction, brought the highlights all the way down and given the shadows quite a boost, probably more than I normally would do on an image, but I think on this one it works. And I've also, uh, pushed some vibrance in there just to bring the colours out. And this looks quite nice for the sea and the sand and the monument and the sky, uh, but the moon looks awful. And the reason for that is, first of all, the moon itself is completely blown out. A 30 second exposure was way too long, so there's no detail in the crescent moon. We've also got this uh, halo around here, which is actually if you like, the, the part of the moon that's in shadow, which is showing through. And of course, the moon is moving. So during the course of a 30 second exposure, it's actually moved part way across the scene. So it's all blurry and you know out of shape and distorted. So most of the image is fine, but the moon is horrible. And that is exactly why I did another shot, which was at one eighth of a second. So let's have a look at that one. So this is my one eighth of a second exposure. And you can see it's pretty much entirely black. There is actually a little tiny bit of detail in there, but you can really hardly see it. But the moon is nice and clean and clear and got some detail in it. And you can see on this one, I've actually done nothing to it. I've not adjusted the exposure, the contrast, highlights, shadows, vibrance, nothing. This is the image basically as I loaded it into Lightroom out of the camera. So that's all I did in Lightroom. So now let's get into Photoshop and see where the real work was done. Okay, here we are in Photoshop and I've got my uh, images opened as layers. So at the moment on the top is the 30 second exposure and underneath is the 1 8th of a second exposure. I'm actually going to just swap that around and then I'm going to hit the little eye tool here to make that top layer invisible for the time being because I want to work on this layer. Always a good idea to leave your original layer untouched. So I'm going to just do Command J or Control J on a PC to duplicate it. And what I want to do now is I need to remove the moon and all the area around the moon, all that bit that looks horrible. So I'm going to start off by using the object selection tool. And I'm going to select the monument. 
and then I'm going to inverse that selection and what that means now is that the monument is protected I'm not going to accidentally clone parts of it out while I'm working on the moon I'm going to zoom in a bit so I can see it a bit clearer and I'm going to take the clone stamp tool I'm going to start off at a hundred percent size is about right and I'm going to select an area just off to one side of the moon about there and I'm just going to brush it in and then a bit more and then a bit more it doesn't look great it's still got a bit of a halo around it at the minute but we'll come on to that now because I'm going to bring my opacity down uh, maybe about 24% something like that and I'm just going to brush a bit more in and the idea here is to start to just blend this all in so that it doesn't look like anything has been removed we've got to remember that with a sky even though uh, the sky may look completely blue there's normally still some sort of textures and details in there but just brushing this out this is actually the the longest and trickiest part of the whole process and I did actually take quite a bit of time over this on the very first pass I'm going to bring the opacity down further and brush in some more brush in some more the idea is just to kind of blend it all in and the thing is, I can, if I need to, come back and do more on this later, so long as I don't flatten the image later on. But at the moment, that's 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 okay for now. I can always, like I said, I can always come back and do more on it later. Now I'm going to move, uh, remove my selection. And now what I want to do is work on bringing my nice moon through so that we get that lovely crescent moon in there. So I'm going to start off by selecting, switching that layer back on and selecting it. And then I want to bring this through using luminosity masks. So I have a little uh, action script, whatever it is you want to call that I can run here that I recorded a while back. Uh, that will create for me a load of luminosity channels so let's fire that off I actually did a whole video on how I create luminosity masks and use them uh, and if you haven't seen that and you want to see how I did this how I created this script I'll stick a link to that up there now of course there are other alternatives you can buy plugins that uh, will do all of this for you but uh, for me this is working fine for this particular image after my script has run I can go into my channels and what I want to do is find the one that's going to bring the moon through for me so if I click on my highlights one channel and that's showing me what my mask would look like and that looks almost perfect if I just zoom in a bit you can see what that looks like now the only concern I have with that is it looks like it's got quite a sharp edge it's perhaps a little bit too perfect a selection and we've got to remember that we're actually seeing the crescent moon through the sky rather than the crescent moon being on the sky or in front of the sky so i think we might be better to go for one that's a slightly less perfect one something like that which is a little bit softer so i'm going to make a selection of that by holding down the command key or the control key on a PC and clicking on it which creates my selection back up to my RGB back onto my layers and then I'm going to just click my layer mask button down here and zoom out and there we have it there's my moon through in the sky above the monument and there were a few other things that I did to this uh, for example there's a couple of sort of streaky lights out here 
which were some boats out on the horizon and I think I cloned those out. Oops, no, wrong layer, back on this layer. I cloned those out, probably did a slightly more careful job on them uh, in the original one. And I cropped the image five by seven, so probably something like that. And then I think the final thing that I did, and I'm going for memory, is I think I put a curves layer in, and I think I just brightened up the monument area by just clicking and dragging on that just to apply a little bit of a curves adjustment, just makes it a little bit brighter. Oops, what have I done there? Let's try that again, shall we? Just make it a fraction brighter, not too much. Something like that. And that's it, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please give it a like, share it on social media. Don't forget about leaving me the comment. If you're new here and you've enjoyed this, make sure you hit subscribe before you go. And as always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch, so thank you very much. And until the next video, bye.